Hello, ASMR people. Before we get into my DNA test, got a little bit of channel business to take care of up front. First off, I know I asked this a while back, but do you remember I asked what should we should name my binaural microphone head? I had a Twitter poll, and Stoic Man edged out White Walker. So Stoic Man is his name. The poll was a while ago, but I haven't had a chance to tell you guys because I haven't done much, much talking in my videos in a while. Mostly what I want to talk about is we've reached 500 subscribers. So I've decided to do a Q&A. So in the comment section of this video, if you have any questions, just ask, and I will answer them in about a week, or if you prefer, all my social medias are listed in the description, you can ask on there. There will be a little announcement in the Q&A, but uh, yeah, that's it. Maybe at a thousand subscribers. We can do a live stream. So enough channel business. Let's get to my DNA test. take a DNA test myself, but I also had my mom take a DNA test. My dad had already passed away when I became interested in his DNA test, so I gave a test to my dad's sister, thus covering my dad's uh, DNA in a way. I did this because first off um, what I get as a DNA mix is really randomly 50-50 from mom and dad. But if I have their two kits separate it gives you a little bit more of an insight of where your genealogy is from rather than the less randomness you have both sides. It becomes very useful when you're doing genealogy if you find somebody who also has taken a DNA test is, let's say, a fourth cousin. If they are a fourth cousin of your dad or a fourth cousin of your mom, it literally eliminates half of your ancestors you have to go through to try to figure out how they're related to you. Also, it goes back one full generation. The further you go back generation-wise, the stronger the match should be. So, we're going to start out with my mom's test. I got my mom tested through Ancestry DNA. There are really three, maybe five, four DNA companies. And each have their own advantages. 
disadvantages. For ancestry purposes, I think ancestry DNA is the best because simply they have the most people who have tested with them. They're a large company. They spend a lot of money in advertisement. They've been hitting Europe pretty heavy the last couple of years. So, uh, you know, it's natural they're going to have more kits turned in and as the future goes, they will continue to have more. Family Tree DNA is a good company if you want to get other type of tests other than the standard they offer Y DNA and mitochondrial DNA. I could spend a whole video explaining it to, to you. Genetic genealogy explained ASMR style. It's putting me asleep just thinking about it. The third company, 23andMe, is good if you want a little genealogy and a little health information. 23andMe markets itself mostly on the health aspect. So if you want to look at what genes you have and uh, what that could mean to your health. 23andMe is a company to do it with. It should be noted that with any of these companies, if you're willing to um, use a little free software or um, submit your results to or put it through a little algorithm some hobbyists have made. You can get health information from any of the companies. And although 23andMe is great for the health aspect, you still do see genealogy matches of other people who've been tested with that company. It can, you can also download your raw file and upload it to a little site called GEDmatch and you can compare your results with other people from other companies. GEDmatch compares the DNA of, um, of people from different companies or you know that use different testing companies and they uh, make it so to peop a person from, let's say, Ancestry and 23andMe can compare their kits with each other. So, oh, and by the way, there is National Geographic has a test that does the all 23 chromosome autosomal just like the other ones but it also does a basic Y and mitochondrial test for I think $200 which is cheaper than if you bought those tests all separately so it's a good value especially if you're male because that's the only way you can get a Y DNA test. Females cannot. They have no Y chromosome. So finally enough theory talk. Let's look at the percentages. As you can see my mom. Well, before I go over the percentages I'll tell you what she should be based on my research. 
actually should be 50% German essentially so that would be considered West Europe sort of we'll get into that in a moment she should be 25% British Scottish to be exact and 25% Swedish or as they'll call it Scandinavian so what is she actually 39% Western Europe 31% Scandinavian and 10% Eastern Europe with a smattering of trace amounts of other European mixes her German ancestry I do know a small part of it came from Prussia which would explain the 10% Eastern Europe so if you add that to the Western Europe that would be about the 50% German she is 31% Scandinavian is slightly more than you would expect and I guess the big surprise is how small a percentage of Scottish genes came through on her but this genealogy it's a, each gene's a 50-50 shot and it should be noted that some question how really accurate you can say someone is this percentage and that's this percentage especially in Europe because first off other than the British Isles it's one continuous landmass so people move many came from the same migration patterns from Asia and Africa and even Great Britain certainly has European mainland influences from the Saxons to the Vikings so let's move on to my dad's DNA or more specifically his sisters dad should be 50% German 50% Scottish now you can see his actual percentages came out 57% British 40% Western and Central Europe and 3% Southern Europe you may notice the graphic looks slightly different here than on my mom's test on my I guess I'll just call it my aunt's test I used family tree DNA because I want to run a different test too that 
I'm not showing here, but a mitochondrial test. So um, that's something that Ancestry does not offer. I only wanted my ant to have to spit in one cup. <laughs> So my dad was pretty close to what you'd expect. Now finally, let's look at my percentages. I am 38% Great Britain. 27% Western Europe, 11% Irish, 9% Italy slash Greece, so that'd be Mediterranean Europe, 5% Scandinavian, and you can see a few other traces, but 100% uh, European, both my parents and I am 100% European, no even traces of Asian or anything else. What's interesting about my results are, it is a bit higher uh, the British Isles than you'd expect. If you add the supposed Irish that uh, I see very little in either of my parents, that would be, at, and the, the British Isles, that would come out 49% British Isles. Now one interesting thing this, uh, to mention, in case you look at these percentages and say maybe mom was a little too friendly with the milkman, um, the one thing these DNA tests will tell you if you get other family members tested is my mom did come out to be, yes, my actual mom because we shared 50% of our chromosomes the tests showed my aunt did turn out to be my aunt we shared 25 percent of our chromosomes so there is no paternity issue here these are just the the, the mix match of genes I've got so if we um, I must have gotten almost all of my dad's British genes and a little bit of the tiny bit my mom had likely As you can see I am 27 percent Western Europe which if it was a 50-50 grab bag if I'd gotten exactly the amount I was supposed to, it'd be roughly 40%. So I got a little less of the German genes, a little more of the British genes. I already talked about the Irish. 9% Italian slash Greece. I have no relatives that I'm aware of that are no, have no ancestors that I'm aware of that are from Italy or Greece. I am pretty extensively done my genealogy research. I also got a Y chromosome test in my haplogroup. It's I2. 
I too a few thousand years ago um, essentially immigrated from Africa to Europe by way of Italy you know across the Mediterranean to Italy so that little bit of Italian Greece might just be some leftover real old genes I am 5% Scandinavian which statistically 15% would have been right if I'd gotten exactly half of my mom's Scandinavian genes but I did not and you can see I have a trace of other things for those who don't know the Iberian Peninsula is Spain and Portugal so overall I would not call my DNA tests a big surprise um, I guess I would have thought I'd be a slightly higher German than I was, but that's the that's the you know 50-50 nature of any one gene. One thing that did surprise me because if you watch other people's videos, often of getting DNA tests, they'll have like this trace amount of Asian or African or something Native American I do not have even a trace of non European genes thus I'm the whitest guy you know <laughs> so these are my results now people often want to get these DNA tests because they're curious of this what percentage of what they are the ad mix is what genealogy people call it from a genealogy point of view the, the real reason to get a autosomal DNA test that's what this is called autosomal is you get to compare it to other people and you will find cousins likely not direct cousins likely third and fourth cousins if you find some third and fourth cousins you can show them what you what work you have uh, done on your family tree they will show you your, your theirs and you can try to figure out how you're related it is really useful if you don't have much work done and you find a cousin that has extensive uh, work on the family tree and they might be able to show you exactly how you're related and I'll have all the work done. I am a pretty passionate guy about whatever I do, so I got I did, did pretty good on the old uh, family tree. So cousins that were matches for me, mostly, I was just able to help them out with their family tree, and they didn't really have much they could uh, give me. But uh, one of them I was able to get a couple pictures, so that's another reason to find cousins is, you know, when, let's say your great grandfather passed away, he probably had some family photographs. And whoever was living, whatever child was living closest to him got those photographs, or whoever handled the estate, so on. And then when that person passed away, whatever child of theirs lived closest, handled the estate, or whatever, got these photographs. So, you know, the family multiplies 
but only one person <laughs> ends up with uh, the photographs, the little family heirlooms. So if you happen to run into a cousin that has that stuff, then you can get scans of the photographs and pictures of the heirlooms, etc. And um, if you have a step in your family tree where someone was adopted or parentage was unknown, DNA tests are often the only way you can figure out your family tree. There are, of course, wonderful stories of people who are fairly old, but their father, who they didn't know, didn't even know who it was, was still alive, and via these DNA tests, they're able to meet their father, who perhaps the person didn't even know they had a another child, or maybe they did, you know, it's all kinds of interesting stories of when it comes to um, these DNA tests. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed. If speaking about genealogy in a ASMR way appeals to you, then um, let me know. And again, as I said at the beginning of the video, reply with those questions from my Q&A. Or use Twitter me, um, send me something in um, Instagram, or, you know, I have all my social medias listed in the... Uh, video description, however you want to get me a question, I'll submit it, and um, hopefully I'll be able to answer it in the Q&A video, and again, thank you everybody for 500 subscribers, we're just getting started.